Hey guys, welcome back. This is Donna Sharp with Holistic Wellbeing. Thank you so much for joining me here on day 529 as I continue with how to create strong families with your children. Now, you know, when I spoke on this about a month, well over a month ago, it was for the whole idea to assist your children in teaching them the basics about life. And we spoke on various topics that surrounds this particular uh, topic of how to create strong family families with children, not only adolescents or teenagers, but young children as well. So we spoke on a variety of different things. So if you didn't get a chance to, to listen to it, I'm going to encourage you to go back, take a look, listen to those lives. They're all titled. They will not be on this fan page of mine because I have been newly moved over to this fan page, but you can find them on my personal page. So last night we, first of all, let me just say welcome. Uh, welcome, Wanda. Thank you for joining. I am your holistic and wellness life coach, and I am here not just to teach you the specifics about how to engage in a nutritional balanced lifestyle, but also how to incorporate a fitness lifestyle so that you're having the best of all worlds and not just partial world, right? But there are other things that I speak on as well. I speak on how to uh, just curtail your mind so that your thought process flows in a different direction. Now, the one thing I will tell you is that I believe in the Lord and what God does. He allows everything to flow in the proper direction, not necessarily downhill, but in the direction that it needs to go to make sure all of these attributes are all working together. All right. So we spoke last night on one of the topics that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, I don't want to necessarily say that this may be just a West Indian thing. But I know one of the things that I clearly remember as a young child growing up in the island of Jamaica is that we were encouraged to have meals together. And to this day, I truly believe that that's one of the reasons why so many families are that are out there, they stick together, the ones that you see that dine together, because they're there to help communicate uh, topics to their children that they may not necessarily understand. It's a question and answer time. It's a time to get to know your family better. So multiple benefits comes out of that, right? So last night I spoke on that. So if you didn't get a chance to listen, I would encourage you to go back and listen to that live. But I spoke on the attributes that that assists as far as dining together at home with your children when everybody is just not on the run, right? It's not just the children. Sometimes you have the adults that are on the run or the adults that are eating while they're standing at the near the dinner table, but not at the dinner table, right? So encourage that space. To, to be a nurturing one based on the habits that you have at home as far as that is concerned. So tonight what I'm going to speak on, and I'm going to speak directly from this book tonight because these are some things that they suggested. They call it dinner time verbal games. A couple of the attributes that this assists is education, communication, and individuality. As you know, all families are different. All family fa families uh, have different dynamics, different personalities, so no two families are going to be alike. So don't expect that John Paul's family is going to be the same as Sue Mary's family, right? Because children are different, personality is different, the way just everything is different. And that's what makes it so beautiful. Can you imagine if every single thing that we have in life was the exact same? There will be no diversity, right? No fun, no excitement. It's just the same humdrum thing every day. So I like that. Diversity is good. So dinner time verbal games. And again, as I mentioned, it's going to help with education because as you're having the games, the education is going to increase. The communication is, it seems to be the number one attribute that falls in all of these topics I've been speaking on all week. It's so instrumental, right? So vital. And then individuality, because although you're communicating as a group, you want to make sure you're respecting each member of the household's personal space because there's certain things that they're going to thrive on that one person thrive on in that group that the other one does not. Some may be more introverts, some may be more extroverts. So we have to make sure we're appealing to all of the family members as well. So as a good tradition uh, at a dinner, at, as dinner together, it is, it can be made even better by playing some entertaining and educational verbal games together around the dinner table. Following are some of the constructive ones that that can be adapted to children of different ages. And I'm going to just read it verbatim because this is a suggestion that they gave. And uh, just like it may be new to you, it's something different that may be to me as well. So the question game, it's called the question game. One problem with most public schools is that 
the on, that only the right answer is rewarded. Children are rarely encouraged or taught how to ask good questions and are seldomly praised for their questions. In the question game, a parent names a subject and each family member thinks of the most interesting or hardest question he can ask about the topic. Amazingly, children who think of, of a question that no one can answer can sometimes be can sometimes be seen voluntarily pulling out an encyclopedia to look for the answers, All right? So one night in the question game, dad said, a baseball. I started to ask something about the, the game because I know a lot of statistics, but dad said no about the baseball itself. So I asked what baseball was made out of. Dad's answer was leather and string, not such a good answer. So after dinner, I was curious. I wanted to do something really weird I wanted to look it up in the encyclopedia, all right? And this is said by Eli, he's age 10. And when you hear me read a story, a lot of times it's coming directly from the, the characters in this particular book. And uh, there's a mom, there's a dad, and then there's the children. And Eli in particular is age 10. And he was the one that just made that suggestion. And then there's speeches. Each family member stand up and speak for 60 seconds on an, uh, a, 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 a very outlandish subject, right? One that no one could ever really think of. And um, the idea is to make it make it a dramatic, as dramatic, interesting, and individualistic as you can. A parent might say, Jimmy, speak for 60 seconds on doorknobs. Jimmy might talk about that shape or variety or about how they work mechanically or about what life would be like without them. He might make up a song about doorknobs or give several doorknobs in the house uh, in the house a name. The idea is to learn to think and speak on your feet. Many kids and many parents will be a bit awkward at first, but as you make it up, as you make it fun and give encouragement, everyone will improve dramatically. Hello, Miss Gabby. Thank you so much for joining. Welcome. Uh, this can be a terrific confidence builder in your children and will lead to their being more comfortable with public speaking later on. So as you see, the dinnertime verbal games basically is just set out to encourage children to think on their feet, to get some education while they're, do while they're doing it, and most of all, just having fun. And um, so this is Linda. Now, Linda's the spouse, the wife, and she says, in our family topics... Uh, in our family, topics went from things like doorknobs to why we eat vegetables or things I could have done when Billy hit me that would have been better than hitting him back or the saddest and happiest moments of our day. We found we were using speeches not only to increase verbal and thinking skills, but to get subjects that needed communication discussed and to let children tell us the very things that they would otherwise lecture them about. It's opening up the creativity as well. It's not just keeping the conversation during dinner time, just a basic conversation, right? So it is amazing that uh, children usually know what they should do or what they need correcting on long before we tell them. They have that hunch. We all do. We have that intuition, that gut that always tells us to follow a certain path. And then what we do is we do our own thing. And then the Lord looks at us, God looks at us and goes, Oh, my poor child, you're, you're just not, you're not listening. I'm guiding you, but you're doing your own thing. So I'm going to wait till you finish and then I'll step in. Quite like what children do. They know what needs to be done. Sometimes they need an extra nudge and need an extra assistance. And that's why we're here as parents to place them on the right track. Now more than ever, guys, now more than ever with everything that's going on in our world is where we're going to really need to hone in closer on our children because there's some things that they're going to see visual to the eye that may not make sense to them. Whether they're a teenager or not, remember what I told you about children's development. I did a whole segment on the brain, and a child's brain does not develop fully until the age of 25. That frontal lobe does not develop. So let's not just assume that they have all the answers, uh, as sometimes adults, we don't have all the answers. So what makes you think a child, especially when you're calling them an adult at 18, who does that? Who calls your child an adult at 18 and kicking them out the house? You got to go. I need my space. Parents, you need to back up, slow down, back up, spend the quality time with them because when they do finally leave, you're going to miss them, all right? So a child's frontal lobe doesn't develop until the age of 25. So we want to make sure that whatever it is that we're teaching them, 
we are spending quality time explaining these things to them and not take for granted that they know it because a lot of times they may not. They may make you think they know it. They'll look at you and say, Mom, Dad, you know, I'm an adult now. I understand these things. Just ignore all of it. Just smile with them and say, I know. <laughs> I get it. And when they leave, you just say, you know, this is what I'm going to do to set up, set the right stage for them so they're always on track. So here's one more I believe they speak on. And then we're going to wrap this up. Yes, this is one where they talk about. This is another game. This one's called Pink Stinks. Woo. Question. What is a what is a crimson sleeping place? Answer, a red bed. This is a contagious little verbal game that helps children learn to rhyme and to think of alternative ways of phrasing things. Question. What is a cowardly guy? The answer they have here is a yellow fellow. <laughs> question what is a pasta sword where do they get these things from <laughs> the answer is a spaghetti machete okay a spaghetti machete if that's going to be a spaghetti machete because we have we you know there's lots of machete in the islands you guys know that are from the islands that's one of our things the machete they use a machete to cut a lot of the water coconut open right but if that's if that machete was it, we don't call it machete we call it mach we call it other things in Jamaica. But anyway, <laughs> if it was a spaghetti machete, I don't know how much cutting you can do with that because it will have no support, right? No back in. So the, the what's sim similar game says, what is a similar, uh, what is, I told you a story that was, thought that was the last game, but this is the last one. Uh, the what's similar game. What is similar about a turtle and a telephone or any pair of apparently dissimilar objects? Kids are used to logical, kids are used to logical connections. One correct answer question at school. And this game helps them to think in less conforming, more creative ways. So this is what Richard says, and Richard is the husband. This is his response on all of this. Telephone and turtle happen to be the subject the first time we played this game at our dinner table. The older school kids couldn't think of anything similar about them. One of the preschoolers said, well, they're both kind of curvy. Uh, the school kids wanted to know if that was the right answer. When we said there were lots more right answer, they started thinking in a different way. We got answers like they both don't eat at McDonald's. And from an older child, if held underwater long enough, they would both cease to function. So basically, they're opening up these children's creative mind, the peace of mind that a lot of times even us as adults don't use. I speak many times on the subconscious and how we res we store things there. We put it on the lock and key, especially times that we're hurting and things that we don't want to bring to surface and bring to life. We bury it. So 90% of our thought process is in our subconscious. So when you open up, you create games like this and you allow children to think outside the box and not just restrict them to one question response, then they're more entitled to be more creative and open. You're gonna get you're gonna get more out of them by doing that, right? You're not restricting their thought process. So I think that's just a wonderful thing how they design these alternative games and it's done during dinner time because you know dinner time is a time where families are all together. The time for family to reconvene, to refresh, to nourish, to release, to whatever right everyone's having fun eating they're enjoying the meal that you made mom and dad made maybe the children made the meal but you're also allowing everyone to have their creative juices rise even if they're not a creative person and you're allowing room for those uh, areas that i speak on that this particular section helps in this case it assists with education communication and individuality you're helping those three attributes to rise to the surface. Surface. So the next time you're at your dinner table, I'm gonna encourage you to uh, spend some extra time playing some games with your family and just see how well it's gonna just allow everyone's shoulder to drop. Their guards are gonna be let down and you're gonna get more out of them. You're gonna get some more out of them, things that you probably don't even understand or never even understood about your own child. You're gonna get that at the dinner table, all right? But again, you can't stand up and eat your dinner you make sure you come together and you, you join union as one. And what you want to do also is you want to pray. 
and thank God for the blessings that you have because so many people right now in this whole pandemic has nothing to be thankful for. So you thank and bless the food that's been prepared and then you move on with your game and then you see what comes of it after, right? So that's all I had to share with you. I'm going to ask that if you felt that this segment benefited someone else, take it and share it with someone in your circle. How dare us get in good information and not pass it on to someone else. But I'm going to encourage you, please do not share pieces of this with them. Because what you're going to do is you're going to butcher Donna's live. And you're going to miss important aspects that they maybe really needed that you didn't share with them. So just share the live directly with them. I'm going to ask you to love the live, right? You know, I don't like that thumbs up business. And most of all, check out my website. It's holisticwellbeing.com. And there you'll find out why I'm so passionate about what I do. Now, remember, I don't spell holistic as H-O-L-E. I spell it as W-H-O-L-E-L-I-S-T-I-C wellbeing.com. All right. So it's a pleasure to be here again. Um, for those of you that's been following me, I want to thank you. I'm always grateful for your support. Uh, this is day 529 of me doing these lives. So if you're catching me for the first time, you have some catching up to do. I'm no longer on my personal page. I've sent invites to my business page right where you are right now. So uh, if you have not been seeing my lives on my personal page and you did not accept like my page, then you will not be able to come over to this page. But outside of that, I just bid you guys farewell. I thank you for being so patient with me. And uh, most of all, I'm very gracious because I'm thankful that you're able to take away some good nuggets that you could throw in your backpack and take it along your journey with your family. And maybe if for nothing else, you're improving your own self and the direction that you're moving in. All right. So let's see what Miss Wanda says. She says, I have some some of those game cards. They're called Think Think it, link it. Ah, interesting. See, I learn something new every day, Miss Wanda. So that's great. Wonderful. So Wanda, thank you so much for joining. Gabby, thank you so much for joining as well. And anyone else that may log on later on, uh, I, I thank you for your support as well. I'll see you guys back again here tomorrow. Until then, you have a fantastic rest of your evening. Take care. Ciao.